Welcome everyone. Today we start a new section, section 5, that's Robot Arms and ROS. So we're leaving behind our vision module and going into what may otherwise be known as manipulation. And here in lecture 10, we're going to start with the basics of low-level control. In section 5, uh, let me give you an overview. We're going to start looking at the planning and the control of robot arms. In this chapter, we look at joint controllers, in particular, position, velocity, and force. Next time, we're going to look at joint space trajectories and how we formulate those uh, using forward and inverse kinematics. And finally, um, uh, in the following chapter, we're going to start working at uh, manipulating objects or grasping objects. And so we're going to introduce an object grabber action server. We have uh, seen some of feedback control before particularly in section 3.5. If you go back into your notes, you'll see that we had a node that interacted with Gazebo. And uh, uh, first, we uh, did all the interaction between the two through, through topics. And later on, we began to introduce uh, Gazebo plugins there. When we used nodes, we mentioned that there was suboptimal performance due to communication latency from the communication latency, and also from the serialization of messages. And we explored uh, some of the Gazebo plugins, right? So now uh, we're going to uh, look into more detail um, the dynamics of the position, velocity, and force controllers for a prismatic joint. So here in 11.1, .1, we introduced the one degree of freedom prismatic joint robot model. First of all, uh, let me say that we're going to be using the ROS control package as a standard interface for robot controllers. ROS control uh, works well both in simulation and for real robots. Uh, the Baxter robot is a great example of that, and there's a few more. So here we, we have the, the main architecture of ROS control. And just to give you a brief introduction into that, first, we have a controller manager that is going to basically tell us what controllers to load. And that might be the uh, position controller, or that might be the velocity controller, or that might be the force uh, controller. And there's a few other details I won't mention right now. The fact that you can actually uh, load one or more controllers, uh, one for each joint or different types that you can load them, unload them, switch between them, and, and do other things uh, like list them as a, as a tool. Let's say you have your controller type right here. So as, as with any controller, you're going to need two things coming in. One is the set point. So the set point is the desired reference uh, for your system. And that's going to be coming uh, probably from a topic uh, or some other, some other form of communication in our system. And uh, the second thing that you need is the actual information. So that's, that's what we call the joint state. So the real robot is down here. Our real robot has some embedded controllers um, on the hardware that is, that is running a real-time loop. Yeah, that's the actuators. And, and, and then it'll have some, some sensors like the encoders that are returning the current position of the robot. So that information is uh, being returned right here. Now, this orange box is just um, a hardware interface, meaning uh, it's looking for transmission ratios. This is a mechanical concept, and you can read more about that there. For now, you can completely ignore this box. And so you can just imagine that we're reading the encoder information, and we call this the joint state interface. OK, so these two uh, pieces of data are going to go into our controller. And basically, you have the desired goal uh, minus the actual goal uh, to produce an error that will go into the controller. Now, ROS control primarily is uh, implementing PID controllers. So that error goes here. And then it will produce an output that goes uh, as an effort or a force or a torque, depending if you have a prismatic joint or a revolute joint. So it goes out as an effort, as a general word, uh, into your actuators. 
that goes all the way down here then to move the robot okay and so so that's where where we output the updates and move our robot you can think of ROS control as a type of templated and extended PI controller the templated means you could uh, do position control, velocity control, force control, so different kinds of controllers, even for mobile robots and, and more. And it's extended because it gives you a series of additional tools um, to work with the controllers. Um, now, as a default, there's a library of controllers defined right here in this link, um, and which I'm showing you right here as well. Now, for the context of what we're going to be doing here, uh, we're going to be working with this position controller. Um, and anytime we, we work with this joint position controller, we're going to need to provide the joint names that we're wanting to control. So basically, for a robot like Baxter, if you have seven joints, you would also have seven controllers and one for each joint. Just as you have seven controllers, you'll need seven different sets of PID values for each of those joints. Uh, this needs to be uh, manually tuned by yourself, which is a challenging process. We can also work with the velocity controller. Now, I've told you that we're going to do force control, but we're not using this type. We're going to look at some dynamics using a force torque sensor down here. We also have the joint state controller. This is simply what is returning the joint states from the encoders of the robot. And, and so this in ROS control language is also a controller. And here we're going to define the type uh, that we use, which there's only one. So that's, that's just a negligible detail and the publication rate. The way we combine uh, ROS control with the rest of the robot is as follows. We start with our URDF file. Here we need to include a gazebo plugin, provide a namespace. This gazebo plugin, uh, by the way, is for ROS control. And so in, in ROS control, basically, we may have a couple of controllers, say the joint position controller and the joint state controller. So when we have a launch file, we need to load the URDF uh, into robot description. And then we need to use the package controller manager um, and the node spawner to actually start whatever controllers we want to do whether that's 2 or 8 or 14 that's that's what we're going to do here inside the launch file and uh, it is also this package that provides all the infrastructure or the tools to load and unload start and stop controllers we also need a configuration file um, that is associated with the namespace which is also the robot model name I'll show you uh, clearly in a second and here we're, we're going to need to list the controllers and then corresponding specifications. Um, we're going to follow this tutorial in these slides, but basically when it comes to the config file, uh, this needs to be of course a YAML file. This is uh, usually going to go inside your config folder. And so we're going to have the robot model name right here. Uh, in our case it will be one DOF robot, as you'll see in a second. And then we need to provide a controller name, like joint position controller or joint state controller, uh, a subtype of that. And then uh, we might provide the, the, the name of the joint, the PID values, or publication rates. For the launch file, sorry for that. For the launch file, we're going to have the controller manager as a package, the spawner as the node. We'll provide a namespace. Normally, we just take the name of the robot. And uh, the arguments here are going to be space-separated controller names. So there's this triangulation between the URDF, the configuration file, and the launch file. So for example, we might have this uh, sacro or URDF file over here. And the robot model name will be one degree of freedom robot. Uh, further down in that same sacro file, we might have a ROS control plugin. So we might give whatever name you want to give that, say Gazebo ROS control. We set the right plugin, in this case, libgazebo ROS control.so, and then we set the robot namespace for this uh, plugin to be 
the same name as the robot model, a one degree of freedom robot. Later, we also have a force torque sensor plugin that we will use later in our lecture. We're going to call this force torque sensor, and for this one, we use the ROS force torque sensor gazebo plugin. Here, we give an update rate, uh, one kilohertz, the name of a topic, and the name of the joint that we used um, to model the force torque sensor, which is above in our file. Over here we have the launch file, and in particular, just want you to see the third and the fourth steps. Here we're going to spawn a robot into Gazebo. Um, so when we spawn the, the robot name, it's going to be a model with this name, right? One Degree of Freedom Robot. We also may choose to start those joints of the robot at particular locations. And finally, we, we start the controller uh, plugins using the controller manager. So here we have controller manager as a package, spawner as the node, the namespace also one degree of freedom robot, and then we're going to have these two controllers for our simple example, joint state controller and joint one position controller. Um, for the configuration file down here, it's a YAML file, we start by listing uh, the namespace. So one degree of freedom robot, colon, and then we're going to have our controllers. We start with joint state controller, that's the category of controller, and then the, the specific type. Joint state controller, joint state controller. This comes from the list of controller types that I showed you earlier. And then a publication rate of 50 hertz. Then we have a second controller, in our case joint one position controller. The type is effort controllers, joint position controller. Here we have the first name of the joint, and then a PID gain. Later I'll provide you a link to Baxter, uh, Baxter, the Baxter example where you can see how this looks for seven joints. And uh, if you, if you want to look at the details of this robot, of the sacro file, uh, you can go over to example controllers um, and use raw set. So this has already been open right here. So this is the prismatic one degree of freedom robot description with joint control. So you can see that here is the one degree of freedom robot. Uh, we have a world link, then we have a link one. We have a fixed joint that connects these two. Then further down, uh, we have link two. Uh, let me mention here for the visual, this is lifted up by 50 centimeters, and basically we have a high box, 0.2.21. And then link 2 um, over here in visual is similar, but this time we have uh, a cylinder of length, length 1 and radius 0 0.1. We'll have a second joint that connects that. This is going to be not revolute, but prismatic. Okay, and then here we're going to have two dynamic properties for that. This is uh, the effort. This is a, a thousand newton meters um, in terms of limit. Then, oh, sorry, for prismatic joints, just it's linear, so a thousand newtons. And then these are going to be the velocity upper, uh, sorry, the velocity limit is over here. Uh, this will be in terms of meters, 100 meters per second, I believe. And then this is the, the distance for the prismatic joint, negative 1 to 0. The damping is, is thinking about a oscillating mass, how, how quickly uh, the oscillating mass will stabilize. So as this number gets bigger, then the, the, the oscillation reduces more quickly. You can play with this number to see the effects. We have uh, transmissions. Um, so we say uh, we have transmission one. Sorry, what did I do? Transmission one, uh, we'll look at the type, uh, which basically is always the same. Uh, transmission interface, simple transmission, uh, the name of the joint, the hardware interface, effort joint interface, and then we go from the joint to the actual actuator. We call that motor one. 
basically we have the same kind of hardware interface and for now that reduction mechanical reduction ratio is one if you work a lot with hardware and motors you probably be, are familiar with this number after that we have the ROS control plugin as I've showed you before with the name the library and the namespace the second well the next thing that we do is we are gonna introduce a uh, force torque sensor first we introduce the link we call it the force torque sensor link and we're gonna treat this as a tiny 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 element so this is a five millimeter uh, cylinder uh, of the same radius as link 2 and uh, basically here we're assuming um, a negligible space for the force torque sensor if you have a real force force torque sensor uh, you can make this larger of course we have some inertial uh, parameters like the mass and the inertia here and then one thing that is still lacking here in gazebo 2 is the way we represent the force torque sensor so here we should have a static joint ideally but for now this joint needs to be modeled as a prismatic joint so this uh, joint links both link 2 to the force torque sensor link okay it is placed at that origin and uh, we need to provide some some values here uh, in terms of how much that can move is upper and lower uh, limits are zero velocity is almost negligible and then the standard damping value we also have the force torque sensor plugin, which is libgazebo ROS force torque sensor. We have the update rate, uh, topic name, and a joint name. Okay, so in general, uh, the key features of, of this whole controller idea is we need to provide uh, limits uh, to all of our joints. We have uh, joint angle limits, velocity limits, torque limits, and damping. This affects uh, our controllers directly how much those joints can move. We have uh, transmissions uh, for the control joint, so if we are using geared systems, those transmissions may have a, a ratio of other than one. We need to account for that. That affects the way that the robot interacts with the world. Uh, we have plugins, in this case one for rust control, the other one for the force torque sensor. Uh, the gains for each of the joints, uh, the final tune gains should go into the included YAML file, configuration file, to have an appropriate response in our PID controller. Those controllers are spawned individually in our launch file as a standard practice, although you can do it from the command line as well. Look at the tutorial uh, link uh, that I shared with you before. And we will need to be tuning those feedback parameters and we'll give you an idea of how to do that here. And uh, these, I just decided to include two slides from section 3.6, uh, just to provide a little bit more detail, um, which I already covered. YAML files have the namespace, controller interface, controller specification, in that case, we used this package. And so here's a little bit more information from that. For PID tuning, we can use RQT reconfigure. And uh, the launch file uh, spawned the controllers. And that launch file first loaded the YAML configuration parameters to the parameter server. Then it loaded the URDF to the parameter server under the name of robot description. Then we span, spawned a particular robot into gazebo using the model flag in the parameter server. And then we used controller manager spawner node uh, to start the controllers uh, using the appropriate namespace uh, that was assigned in the gazebo block. Okay, and then we had the names of each of the controllers as part of the args element. So we, we did something like that. All right, that's all for section 11.1. And now we're going to look at position control.